don't have I, so I guess we can just start and I was just looking oh Marcus, Marcus is here too I was hey just looking I was just looking for that little statement which I Marcus has a Mr. Person <laughs> because i'm always right it's mr right <laughs> oh yeah i need to change that that was a um yeah a work thing so. oh here i have it i i, I have it too there. yeah far more appropriate i love those little books those little uk books right um okay kim i can just read it so it says uh Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner via Zoom. No in-person attendance or members of the public will be permitted and public participation in any, oh, we don't even have that. So we don't have a public hearing. Okay. And um, so why don't we start the meeting and we'll see. I did, um, was in touch with Holden today. He asked what was up. And uh, so I invited him to the meeting and I know my son. Yeah, Ethan he's an attendee. Too. I tried to promote him and it's not letting me. So okay. I don't know if one of the co-hosts wants to try. I don't know why Zoom is not letting me do that function or maybe it just did. Sometimes you have to like, you can invite people to become a panelist and then it's up to them to actually like agree or sure something he is. up okay <clears throat> hi holden i'm glad you could join us on such short notice hi. how's it going hi, hello holden hi chris um wow so, so i can't i i don't actually um i can't find the agenda for this meeting Can okay send that to me uh sure i'll send you the link right now does everybody else have the agenda i'll just send mm -hmm. it yeah, if you could. Uh, I, yeah. I think I got it earlier, actually. My work doesn't allow me to open my personal email on my work computer anymore. Oh, wow. Well. That's cool. Eh. You mean you need hey. that for your work? Is that what you're saying, Gilbert? <laughs> your employees at work? <laughs> no, I just need my work computer not to allow me to open any email. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, that would not be good for us, though. That, that, used, to, that used to make me crazy people <laughs> doing their all their personal stuff on their work machines oh the worst mm. is when they leave and you see all those websites they've been surfing and stuff and you have to do yeah, all this. The, the worst is when you've got somebody trading guns and company time oh yeah and well when, when you when you suspend them you find porn on his machine oh that's what i was going to say that's what happened with somebody that i had who replaced me in one of my jobs too they said wow his okay. computer was full so yeah okay all right so i just resent that um, thank you link. Yeah. all right okay there we go okay okay so um are there any announcements uh i had a couple wait am i I'm sorry, I'm just trying to play with my volume. I don't know, it's weird. I can't see the volume button, but um, okay. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so one of my announcements was that uh the council's town services and outreach committee, the TSO committee, that they are now reconstituted yeah. and they had their first meeting earlier this week, I believe it was on Tuesday. Um I'll just run down who's a member of that. So Dorothy Pam is the chair of the TSO and the committee members are um, Shalini Balney mill uh, Anika Lopes, uh, Anna Devlin Gautier, and uh, Andy Steinberg. So Andy Steinberg was the only member of the past TSO who was re-elected in this election. A number of them didn't run and and so he wanted to stay on the TSO and provide the continuity. So one of the things they did at their meeting is they went over some of the carryover items from the TS, the last TSO that the TSO didn't get to, including North Pleasant Street, um, the section through campus that we walked. Um, and then people brought up a number of other items too. Um, and a number of the TSO members said that they did wanna work more closely with the TAC 
um, I did speak at the end of the meeting at the public hearing, the public comment period at the end, and just mentioned that, you know, we'd be available to attend and speak to the TSO as their time permits. One of the things they're looking right now is that they inherited a number of items from TSO, um, the old TSO, and then also there's some additional items that they want to look at or revisit. So they're working right now to kind of set their priorities. Um, and also one thing that had come up with the North Pleasant Street project, the one on campus, the Eastman to Pine Street one, is that um, uh, the town manager just said that DPW is super busy right now with a lot of projects. So he didn't think that that need to push forward right at the particular moment. Um, the other thing that was mentioned at that meeting, and I've also heard it brought up at the council meetings is that there are gonna be, I guess the town is gonna be doing a presentation soon about the downtown parking permit regulations and recommendations. Um, and they're supposed to be I don't know, maybe Guilford or Chris know more about this. They're supposed to be presenting that to the council, I think, in one of the next few meetings. And then I guess it will be pretty comprehensive and I think that comes up, on, I think that's scheduled for Monday. Oh, so I guess it's on the agenda, all right. But it will likely get referred to TSO and perhaps it will come to us too. So that's all my updates, announcements. Any others? Thanks, Tracy. That's really useful. And I did have a quick, um, well, it's more of a question and maybe so, because I don't know the answer, but um, maybe Chris or somebody could speak to it. But just, I've, got, I've gotten a number of emails from people about how MassDOT just did their next round of the shared street and spaces grants. And some people, some advocates have said, oh, and the town should apply for this or town should apply for that. And of course, we're an advisory committee and I'm sure that town planning staff and other staff are already looking to tap into those great source of funds since the town's already gotten three grants through the shared streets and spaces program. So um, I would love it if Chris could speak to that maybe at a future meeting or something. I don't know what the deadlines are. Thank you. Yeah, it would be nice to know what planning is planning to do in the public way again, yes. Or DPW, I don't know, maybe it could come from you, Guilford. Well, actually, no. one of the ones that we just did for planning, they actually, it's all torn up now because the choice of materials was poor. Oh. Oh, Guilford, no. we've sworn to each other that we will always consult you early on, from now on. <laughs> I wanted to make an announcement, which sure. is a kind of good thing, I think. Um, Amherst College proposed a new building along South Pleasant Street. It's called um, the Lyceum, and Guilford probably knows all about it. But it's a it's a new building that's very modern in style, and it's being attached to an old brick building at let's see, 197 South Pleasant Street. And it's designed by a really good architect, and it has a great landscape architect, and um, doesn't necessarily have much to do with transportation other than walking, walking transportation, but um, it's going to be a new landmark along South Pleasant Street. And um, if anybody's interested in seeing drawings about it or anything, it's in the, pl the planning board packet for last night's planning board meeting. So it was approved and it will probably be breaking ground sometime in mid-March. So that's kind of a, a big new thing. And we're pleased that Amherst College is um, building that building. Well, that's cool. Can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Can I ask a question of Chris about that? Sure. Uh, Chris? Yeah. Uh, was there any discussion from Amherst College about a sidewalk on that side of uh, South Pleasant Street? Because that's come up. Somebody once um, rode into the TAC and said, could there be a connector to the bike path by making it easier to get from the bike path to downtown around Amherst College? and because that side of the street is very hilly. Uh, is, was there any discussion about from Amherst College about any changes in the sidewalk on that side of the street? So what they're planning to do is rebuild the sidewalk in front of the buildings that they're going to be working on, which is 197, 205, and 211 South Pleasant Street. So they'll be tearing up that sidewalk and rebuilding it. Um, there, That will then connect with this crosswalk that's at Walnut Street, the existing crosswalk. And they may have had conversations with Guilford about rebuilding that, that crosswalk. 
Um, they've also talked about the possibility of building a crosswalk farther to the north that they think would work better in terms of grades, but they're not sure that they want to go ahead with that. And that would need um, approval by the town council. And I'm sure they've talked to Guilford about that too. And the DPW has reservations about that because it's a mid-block crosswalk. So that may or may not come about. Um, in addition to that, Amherst College, I understand, is doing a kind of a review of their um, handicapped accessibility and pathways throughout their um, campus. And so I'm sure we'll be hearing more about that. So uh, you, they, they are making an effort to make it easier to get around, particularly for pedestrians. But the, uh, the issue that um, Bruce just mentioned of connecting to the bike path, uh, we didn't hear anything about that. I, I'm wondering, I could ask my fellow committee members, I would be interested in seeing their, their sidewalk plans in general along there, since we've talked a lot about Route 116. Yeah, um, I think that would be great. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Who is who's leading the project up over, over at the college? So they, they really don't um, have any two plans. People, uh, Tom, Tom Davies and um, it is Mark Tom. Andrews. The extent okay. of their sidewalk work that they're proposing right now is very minimal. It's just, only in just front what of they're three, hitting. Yeah, yeah. Three properties that I mentioned. So I don't know if that would be of interest to you to see that. I'm curious there. though. In that part of that plan, they were asking the town for an expansion of their. Um, parking lot at Newport House. Did that go through too? That's correct. And that did go through. Yes. Okay. So so is this is this property the one where they moved the house recently? Yeah, it was next to it. It's between yeah, where they moved yeah. it and um Biddy's house. Yeah. Yes. It's right down the hill from the brick house. Um the president's house is up north or up the hill from that. And where the building was moved is essentially where the new building is going to go. Oh. Or, or could we at least see plans as they emerge for the crosswalks? Well, as I said, we're not sure if, the, if Amherst College wants to build the crosswalks or not, but if you wanted to see the whole thing, you could go, go to the planning board website and look for the packet for January 19th. And the whole thing is in there, the design of the building, what they're thinking about for a crosswalk, if they can get it approved, um, all their landscaping, their plans for the Newport House parking lot, the whole package is right there in the January 19th planning okay. room packet. Thank you. You know, I, um, Bruce, thinking more clearly about, you know, that area and what you're, you know, I, um, now that I know where it is, right, that is a very, um, treacherous part biking part it all it somehow really narrows right there and with the hip the steep hill it feels kind of cavernous and and cycling on the other side uh, on the amherst college side of that street is very i mean i'm fine on it but i i can see how that's not very welcoming and, and it's just that narrow start right because on the other side of the hill you start with a sidewalk on both sides and it fe and and mm. it feels more expansive so yeah well and i remember i don't know how it's um lined right now but i remember years ago arthur swift like had taken pictures of how the bike on the going northbound like how the bike lane section the shoulder was like a lot of different widths like it was wider and then more narrow yeah. and like it was just really difficult to navigate as a cyclist yeah um so but especially that one strip is very narrow i mean the rest of the road seems very good i mean for you know me as a cyclist but anyway were you going to say something um oh no guilford were you going to say something look like you were um, just this is a really small project this is not yeah. no 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 i yeah and then the sidewalk work they're doing is in a very small area and the crosswalk work they're doing is really is really not appropriate for what they're doing so the crosswalk is probably not going to get a recommendation yeah. from us to go in so there's going to be the existing crosswalk that's there now at walnut um, and south pleasant right yeah that's the one you're talking about yeah the one at south pleasant and walnut yeah we our recommendation to them was to put a bridge over a pedestrian bridge and and link the two sides that way because 
from the day they open that building until the day they close that building, they're going to be complaining about pedestrians being threatened by bicyclists uh -huh. and cars and buses and everything else. Mm -hmm. It's got you know sufficient what? grade on the other side to so it's, make it's it gonna... fairly easy for a bridge, right? May I correct something that I said? Um, I, I, I think I got a little confused. Ours College is, is not looking at paths and handicapped access throughout their campus. What they're looking at is um, the pedestrian and safety issues along South Pleasant Street. And I think oh. they're looking at it um, along their whole, the frontage of their campus. So they're looking at car traffic and bicycle traffic and pedestrian traffic and how to make it more safe. Uh -huh. I'm sure that we'll be talking to Guilford about that, but they have apparently hired a consultant to do that. Now, now, Chris, I have a question on that. Are they also looking at the main street? No, the, um, the Route 9 section, the college street section? No? No. Okay. Not as close as I know. No. I think they're just looking at South Pleasant. I mean, that's like where the cyclist was killed, but... I don't know of uh, any fatalities along the 116 section. Their, their big issue is they're now, they're doing something they said they would never do. They're actually going west of, one, of South Pleasant Street, 116. They, they said they were gonna keep their campus on the other side. And now they're concerned they haven't done any studies to show how safe it is or how dangerous it is mm -hmm. or anything like that. So they're all trying to, they're trying to do a lot of things. Yeah, well, let's, it is gonna, they are going to have pro problems. I mean, pedestrian access of that, that, I uh -huh. mean, because the, the road is not, I mean, it's just too narrow right there and there's not access from now, their main campus to there at easy access or direct access, I guess. But there, there are a number of Amherst College uses on the west side already, right? Like, aren't there yep. some dorms and things like that over there? No, no, no classrooms. No, oh, no, class. Oh. There is a stadium. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a stadium and there's... Yeah, but there's no classrooms. The no observatory content. and things like that. Yeah, yeah. They said there are classrooms in Morgan Hall and in the observatory. That's what I would... Yeah. And then there's College Hall, I guess, where there's a career center and some other things. Um, the observatory is like... It's over the corner. Really get used. But anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the number of classes... The number of classes they're adding to the west side of campus is it's gonna is large be. compared okay, to what they have now. I, I, as a biker, I, I actually use the sidewalk along there, and it is narrow and it's steep, but I feel safer steep. than being out on the road because of what you're talking about, Kim, where the road is so narrow there that I just go up on the sidewalk. But to I can't imagine. I'm, I'm just gonna say it would be great if they could make that sidewalk wider if other people are doing what I'm doing and biking up there. Mm -hmm. But also I see how accessibility is an issue because that is a really steep part of, you know, that sidewalk is very steep there. If you're trying to navigate a, a wheelchair down there or mm -hmm. something, you know. Yeah, well, well, the only hard. way you're going to get to it from that is either from Route 9 or down from Walnut, right? Because you can't get to it by the president's house because that's all um, accessed via stairs. So right. there's no yeah. way right. you're going to get there which would make the idea of that pedestrian bridge off Johnson Hill Road probably, a, yeah, anyway. But I mean, that's for them to decide. Yeah. But they should have deeper pockets. They're all gonna have a path through the woods from Newport House, which is where the expanded parking lot is to this new building. Right. So, mm -hmm. That's the handicapped accessible path. Got it. Until yeah. the the new president complains of the noise at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, a number of parts of the Amherst College campus, I mean, not just along 116. I mean, there's so many steep sections, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would think that it's I would think that there's some accessibility issues to the other parts as well. Right. Even the diamond dining common, you know, like there's the path in the back is super steep. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, um, yep. Yeah. Uh, any other um, public <coughs> public comments? <laughs> Actually, um, Tracy, you said you talked to the TSO. I heard from Councillor Devlin, whatever her name is, Guthier. Right. Yeah. Um, she was asking if TAC was after a a, um, a liaison. I did say that it would be 
in the positive, but I'm hoping she talks to you more a bit about it. So. Okay. Um, yeah. I actually reached out to her a few days ago um, because okay. she had emailed me about the project in South Amherst that, you know, people had been interested in. Mm -hmm. The one from the South Common where people were asking for better access um, even before she was a counselor and I had gone back in touch with her. Um, she seems like you know, she'll be a great member of the TSO and it would be great to yeah. have a liaison. So mm -hmm. definitely one that can actually, you know, so one that can support us and so on and, mm -hmm. yeah. and bring our concerns forward and everything. So definitely, yeah. Um, great, are, are there any other comments before we get on to the business agenda business? Um, I, just, I just have a quick comment is that I think I need, I probably need to leave at six, 20 to go get a kid okay <laughs> in transportation but other than that good um so we uh, the next agenda item is um approval of the minutes from the last meeting i have a question about the minutes um under updates number three and then uh three tso recommended supported changing the traffic flow one way northbound from the Coil into triangle, and underneath that are two recommendations. I thought those recommendations were what we made, what the TAC made after um, we discussed what was going on there. Because it, it, the way it's presented now, it looks like that's all from the TSO. But I think number one and two, if I recollect, I think those are our recommendations. Aren't all of those our recommendations? I mean, Bruce, I mean, yeah. they are all, I think, I mean, we could add a little bit of language there um, just to say that the TSO, because I was in touch, it was Evan Ross who was chairing the committee at that time. Um, and he did develop the motion, you know, in accordance with the feedback that he had received from TAC. So, I mean, we could say, um, we could say that you know the TSO recommended the changes like supported by TAC or something like that. Or yeah, I think we should. I think uh, mm -hmm. let's give ourselves credit. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. So um, should we? Uh, any other uh, comments about the um, the uh, minutes? So how would you recommend um, changing that? Could we say in accordance with tax recommendation? No. Yes, that's what we sh could say. I think. That's, okay. Okay. Do you, do yes. you think that's good? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's just that we had recommended twice, but I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. In accordance with tax feedback. I mean, I'll send Amber the revised version. Okay. And so, and also, so on three like two, three, a two or whatever, right? So, I mean, it said original attack recommendation was to share a space with pedestrians. Um, I mean, it was, it was mainly about, um, so that whole, that whole line is about the southbound counterflow bike traffic, um, not the anything northbound. And I think our recommendation was really just to have some counterflow space for cyclists going southbound. And if they could be accommodated on road, you know, that's one option, or if there could be like a separated path um, on the west side of that section, North Pleasant Street, that's an option too. Is that what people recall from that? I think so. so. Yes. I mean, I don't think that we are just saying that you had to share the space. I mean, we wanted to have some accommodations for the counterflow traffic. And um, yeah, I just don't think it was done. on the road. I think it was on the path, but yeah. Right. I mean, our, our original recommendation, I mean, the, the, the thing that came up, though, is then at the TSO meeting and then at the council. And I know that um, like Eve Vogel and Rob Kustner and some other people provided feedback that they and the DAAC was concerned, too. They were concerned about the idea that you would have cyclists and pedestrians in the same space and that so preferably you would want to make sure that it's divided and perhaps that means if there's yeah, yeah divided absolutely you, 
Yeah, but if I there's mean, a the space that as... you can do it, you would do it on road, not just. Um... But we discussed in the meeting that on road right. is going to be problematic given the number of entrances and exits on that portion of right. the street, yeah. and then the parking, and then the, the just the general lack of width on the road to begin with. So that's why I think we pushed for the on you know the off right off grade. Um, thing but I mean because the same could be said with the swift way or whatever it is you know along the university too right oh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah but I think it was I mean it was a real concern I mean there was like even I, others I'm to not, push back with that yeah so yeah but I, yeah I mean that was certainly something that we considered prior to that feedback oh, anyway for sure it was something we had uh, discussed mm -hmm. in depth yeah at the meeting um, so are we making a change? Yeah, I, su I suggest we just clarify that slightly. Okay. So and I'll write... provide that update okay. to Amber. Yeah, okay. that's fine. So with uh, is there any other discussion before we put these minutes with those um, changes up for a vote? All those in favor? With those changes. And so you'll send those. So that is yes, I will. approved. Okay. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Great. And um, so our next order of business is, um, I think, finalizing, trying to finalize our crosswalk guidelines, um, which are, which we all received today from Amber. Um, and I have, I don't have my meeting notes from the last time with me because I'm in my office instead of at home. So I had forgotten where we were on these um, guidelines if someone else would like to take over that. So Kim, so I had actually looked back. So we discussed them last at right. the May 20th oh. meeting and I went back to Amber's minutes from the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I think Guilford has some notes too because he had expressed some concerns, but what the minutes say is that they said um, that there were, we had recommended adding um, some language about uh, crosswalk widths, maybe. Oh, adding some language related to the signalized intersections and also related to ADA, ADA compliance. And then also about having um, tactile um, markings at the um, crosswalk entrances. More frequent use of tactile markings and yeah. the more frequent use of that um, uh, the the fake brick. Yeah. Uh, but Guildford, I noticed in town at the the Amity and South, you know, the big intersection there. It seems like the tactile surfaces have been pulled up by the plows. Is that something that happens every mm. year, and it's just a, a cost of doing business, or it's just this year? Arrived two storms and then it came up. Oh, oh wow. So is there a better solution where we're not continually paying to put them down again? Well, the way to do it is just when we, we actually, we put these in every time we do a, a crosswalk upgrade, yeah. tactile pavers go in, but we don't use the ones that were used this time. The ones that were the ones that we put in were part of a, a grant that, and they're, we don't, we don't, we've never used them before. We don't really like them. We like to put in the recessed ones that mm -hmm. get recessed into the concrete when you install yeah. the, the crosswalk. Um, and that's the ones we use. Um, but this intersection was done in, this intersection was done 20 years ago. 20 years ago? Yeah, almost 20 years ago. And when it was done, the requirement was for only a one foot wide tactile strip. And that's why the pavers are only one, only one foot wide through that, that section. Um, if we redid it, they'd go to two feet because the, the um, requirements have changed. Um, so we're we just gonna have to deal with those ones in, in town. Those are your only problematic ones or you're not pulling them up anywhere else? Well, this is the only place we've used those. Okay. So really it's just that problem. Yeah, that, that, that product for the tactile pavers is not a very New England friendly product unless you actually <laughs> install it when you install the mm -hmm. ramp. 
And if you're going to do that, we use a different product anyhow. So Guilford, these are the ones right in downtown North Pleasant Street. Is that where you're talking? At, uh, Main, it's at the corner of Main. Actually, we took up off the ones at Main and North Pleasant, both corners there okay. by the subway we took out. Yeah. Ah, all right. They're like lying against the snowbanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. It looked like somebody threw carpet out. They do. <laughs> all right. Um, and, oh, go on. Sorry. No, go ahead. Nope. I was just going to ask since we've been talking about Amherst College, when we, when, uh, I mean, what is the sort of the idea for dealing with the issue at South Pleasant and Hitchcock? You know, the fact that that, is that something Amherst College would be dealing with? Because it seems like the bricks are collapsing in the in the crosswalk and the, the holes are getting a bit deeper. So would that be something we could, you know, address with the, uh, with the, the fake brick or? Well, a funny story is, is that when we came, when you guys came out with your guidelines, no one, no one at Amherst College liked them. They thought <laughs> they didn't, they wanted to keep their brick uh, crosswalks, uh, but then they've seen the ones we've put downtown and they really love them. <laughs> so we're hoping to take out, when we redo the roads and things get redone, those will come out and we'll put in the okay. epoxy. So they will actually, it's actually yeah. thermoplastic. Yeah. Yeah. No. Something I really like about them is they're very, they're very visually distinct. You know, mm -hmm. they're really, I feel they're really good. They're and excellent. So yeah. Thermo, will that keep the color for a long, long? It keeps time? it for long. It keeps it longer. It does keep it longer, longer. than paint, obviously. Yeah. About every five to 10 years, we may have to replace them or touch oh. them up. Right. Um, so if I remember correctly, so at our last, what I was referring to um, about in my notes, not having my notes was, um, I recall in the last meeting, we did discuss some, we, I think we made the same, um, we were saying that we wanted to update the ADA requirement stuff. And then um, I, if I recall, um, Guilford suggested that that's, um, kind of a difficult, you know, putting those guidelines in might be too much for our committee to, to put it if it's a requirement. It, right, am I correct in that, Guilford? Didn't, weren't you saying something to that effect? Well, you, you, you were kind of wandering, everyone was wandering into being very specific about yeah, the requirements. Exactly. So my general, it just reference the people you want to follow their guidelines. Yeah. And, you know, DOT, mass DOT, uh, federal highway guidelines and, and go that route about it. And, and I would also, I know this is going to go against some of your opinion, but do not use the disability group that was referenced. Do not use their guidelines. Right. Because um, they're a little, they're too much. They would effectively prevent a lot of up, upgrades from happening. Is that what? Yes, I mean, their guidelines are meant for buildings and for where you have a large parcel of land where you can do switchbacks and you can do a lot of things to get the grades where you want it. Um, on the side of the road, we have an exemption from meeting, meeting the grades sometimes, but we don't have an exemption in, in crosswalks. And if you, if you try to go, if you try to, get, put all their standards in some of our sidewalks wouldn't be able we wouldn't be able to put some of the sidewalks in the road we have there's not enough layout room so could we just um pull up the crosswalk guidelines and just revisit them and just check it where they are and then hopefully we'd be able to like vote them through yeah. at this meeting. so my notes from the may 20th meeting were that you know, once TAC is done with them, with our recommended crosswalk guidelines, then it would go to the town manager and then the town manager would decide whether to take it to the council. Is that right? And then it could circulate back, I guess, to, from the council back to like TSO, or I guess, I guess not when TAC is done with it, with our recommendations, could it go up. I mean, what I was hearing at the TSO meeting the other day is that TSO can also bring things forward to the council too. 
So like, you know, if it came from TAC, maybe it could go to TSO up to the council, but that's what. Uh, um, if we want, I can share my screen where I have um, the share and we can go, would you like to just go, go yeah, through this? Yeah, that'd be helpful, but Guilford or Chris, is that, is my understanding of the direction it goes after us correct or not or <laughs> to be decided or something, so. I haven't followed this um, topic in quite a while, so I don't know what the status is or where it goes. No, I mean, I think, so we had, brought, we had talked about it at the May 20th meeting because Guilford brought it to our attention and then I think we had left it that Guilford was maybe going to make a few changes and then bring it back to us. And then after the TAC was sort of done with our recommendations, it would move forward to the council in some form. But so if, if you guys, if we make the changes and everybody's in agreement with the changes, um, my understanding is, is that the easiest way to get it in front of the council is for me to send it to the town manager's recommendations. And then you've already looked at it and given your blessings to it. So those are like two recommendations that would go to the council. And then the council can decide to act on it or send it to the TSO to think about it and okay. then act on it or something like that. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay, thanks. So do we want to, um, I, I think much of, I mean, much of this, we, we have gone over quite a bit, but I guess what we should plan on doing is just making sure that it still reflects our current thinking. And then um, maybe there are minor, you know, maybe there are some minor changes we want, want to make and then pass it along. Does that sound like? Sounds good to me. Okay. So I think, I, I think if everyone's read the, the, the intro here seems perfectly mm -hmm. fine to me. Um, um, and I'm out. I don't. Uh, the intro is from back when the count when the select board was in place, and you and the select boards who asked you to do this. Um, so I don't know if you want to change it somehow to reflect that you're just doing this, or and this is a recommendation coming from you and the public works department or planning department too, um, instead of saying that you were asked to do it. Where does well, it say? We haven't been specifically tasked to do it. Right. Well, the, the select board tasked you to do it back a yeah. while back, but they're going. We now. haven't been tasked. We're taking Correct. this up on our own volition. But does yeah. it? It doesn't. Where does it say that in, in the purpose? Uh, in the purpose, but we could also say Guilford how you had brought it to our attention in like last year as well, right? The DPW brought this to the. Yeah, I just think that I just think the purpose needs a little. Little yeah, little because okay. yeah. you haven't been tasked to evaluate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't talk about the select board or because mm -hmm. they, they, they've we they've been previously established, right? We're just updating them. Can, can we just simply say that we've recognized an ongoing in our discussions with the DBW, we've recognized an ongoing need to have uh to establish crosswalk standards? Yeah, that sounds good. Well, our to to complete i mean the tac website has draft standards from like a few years ago mm -hmm. and that's what guilford brought back to us i mean so mm -hmm. they've been out there you know in the world mm -hmm. for a few yeah, years but they've not so. been they're still draft they're not no they're still a draft standard. right you know the dpw you know the tac recognized yeah. the importance to finalize its recommendations on the draft crosswalk guidelines that were developed previously or something could we say something like that sure sure oh well, who's editing guilford's editing no that was me oh okay <laughs> right. i don't know if that's what i'm trying to glean from the discussion i'm trying to write as and glean from the the you know I, this is not this is my document it doesn't have to be a real one <laughs> you know it's fine um but is that what we just I'm, i was just listening and trying to make up some words that reflect the discussion in discussion with the dpw the amherst tac it, our the tac has yeah we don't need to say amherst i don't think right but yeah the tac um has has established um yeah that's fine yeah. crosswise standards that will encourage blah 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 the mm -hmm. need with, do we want to change this sentence or we could, yeah, I mean, we could just take it. Um, just get and, rid of it. We don't need that last year. Right, and, and yeah, you know, 
that's, uh, that's fine. Well, I, mean, I, I guess we that... could just say we could say that we, you know, um, we not established crosswalk standards that we uh, drafted recommended crosswalk standards, right? Because we can't actually establish anything ourselves as an advisory body. Okay. Yep. So we'll that that. We've, well, developed, we, we, we've prepared recommended crosswalk standards or something. Mm -hmm. We've dr drawn up crosswalk standards for your right. for your acceptance. That will encourage, right? Yeah. Can I, can I propose? Can I propose yes. some. Of course. Yes. Oh. So go back to has after TAC. Yep. Um, the, all right. Has realized the need to establish crosswalk standards that will encourage. And then, yeah, just delete that down to the encourage, yeah, down to safety, accessibility, and consistency. How's that? Mm -hmm. And I mean, do we want to mention that, you know, standards were drafted previously and uh, then just never no. finalized? No, no? there's okay. no need. No. All right. Okay. That's fine. All right. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Uh, and th I think this is all the same. I mean, obviously, the images, some of these images have been. Changed. updated already but it, what it does show is what the condition that has been around town you know absolutely i mean we could swap them out if we're desperate but well it's just like fine. that one on the right right so it's still there oh that one's changed but i mean you could swap it with i was talking about it um South this Pleasant one's still there oh, that one's still there on the left yeah, yeah. right that's true I think what you want to show is examples of things that yeah, are wrong. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. matter if it's been fixed or not. It's just mm -hmm. an example. Okay. Oh, this is important too. The TAC was educated on regular. Are these still the, the um, current uh, guidelines? Yes. Yep. Okay. Great. And those are all national organizations. They're not no, no right. local. Yes. All right. And um, or so we're in agreement on this. And then um, the actual recommendations, town-wide standards. Right. Um, I think these are these are fine. I mean, so now one of those, right? So the um, the ones that have gone in on North Pleasant Street don't do they meet these because they also have that underlying like red surface. Yes, they're basically the standard parallel with the pattern inside. Okay. This, yeah. Um, there, go ahead. And the, oh, sorry, I'm moving on to the next. So you go ahead. No. Okay. So the materials are, are um, this is appropriate. The width is appropriate. Um, light. Oh, yeah. And, and we still agree on these things the Cobra fixtures. As I, I have preferred. a comment about the Cobra. Uh, I believe at the library crossing downtown, there is a different type of lamp. Is that right, um, Guilford? I think it's what yeah. you want. Gooseneck, is that what it's called? Yeah, I mean, actually, you just, you could call it a, um, just standard overhead lighting. Yeah, because yeah, I think overhead saying, fixtures. Yeah, I think just saying Cobra, uh, to me, that other type of lamp is more effective yeah cobra. I, th I think we could just get rid of the cobra yeah oh so, so standard, standard fixtures fixtures oh, or standard, standard overhead. overhead overhead it says lighting. overhead lighting standard overhead fixtures um, standard overhead lighting fixtures just put standard yeah to the front i would just put standard center. at the front yeah got it standard this doesn't also, cobra mean something else too aren't those like weird they have different arms. signs in Hadley yeah. called Cobra ones mm -hmm. or something. And, that, yeah, and, do, and we and we want them to be like directed oh, downward. Right. Do we need to mention that we it's like directed downward or something? Well, is it is it possible to show a photograph of that other fixture? Yeah, we can put the other fixture beside it and have all yeah, three of them in there. Yeah. Oh, that'd uh, be if you great. Put yeah. A, um, Kim, can you just go into review and add a comment that says you're going to add? Yeah. A picture um, of those. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, <clears throat> I think there actually might be a picture of them elsewhere in this document. What what do it we call be. those those Im those images? Say, uh, the one by the library. Yeah, it is. It's actually downtown. It's on page lamp. four. Yeah. Yeah. It's already five A. Right. Yeah. Oh, so I don't think we need to. It's fine. I think we if we put across the three, we're fine. Well, wait. And then so... we just like. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I see. So part of it is townwide standard. So there's this yeah. one section. I mean, maybe we, we want to just have like different headers or something to make it clear, like maybe that recommendations, can we maybe have it in caps or something just to make it sure that the, I mean, these, this, this part, the, the word recommendations on page two, if you go back up, just to make it sure, like here under got that, it. Yeah, got yeah. It, got and it. then maybe say a townwide standards. And then there were, you know, and then I would just say a yeah, just to make it clear. <laughs> right. And then so the and then the optional enhancement, that's where the other light came in. Yeah, for right. the downtown. So maybe we just leave it where it is, I think, is mm -hmm. what I'm hearing mm -hmm. is because you have that's, this. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Right, Bruce. Oh, okay. So you have the town wide standards, Bruce, and then you also have the ones for downtown. So I don't think we need to change it. OK. OK. Um, I, I just find that one brighter and covers the crosswalk more than the Cobras do. That's why I brought it up. Ooh, look at these handsome sidewalks. They look a lot like ours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now. Know. We, now we could take pictures, right? So. <laughs> um, right, so, and so, so at the front of that, that optional one, you could say, um, or maybe optional enhancements to a box you could we could call that b or something yeah. i would yeah yeah so one thing um examples of standard street lights most of the town does not have standalone street lights street lights are attached to a oh yeah telephone poles telephone pole so do pole, we yeah. do we need to include that as a standard street light because right now None of those would be considered a standard street light. I think that's why I said Cobra head fixtures is the standard lighting fixtures because all the ones, all the other ones down, all the other ones in town are Cobras. Okay. Which is the one on the, which is the one on the left. That's a Cobra type right. fixture. Right. This is? Yeah. Um. But I, I think this brings up the issue of in the future, if there's a new crosswalk somewhere, yeah. say in a village center, would we want to recommend that other type? If that seems more effective, the type that's at the library. Well, maybe. Then, so one thing we could do, Bruce, is under under B, instead of downtown crosswalk options, we could say downtown and village center crosswalk options. I, 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 would, I would think that would be a good idea. Because... I mean, if we're creating these village areas, village wherever centers. they are, yeah. wherever they are, right, we would like to have like enhanced mm -hmm. pedestrian mm -hmm. facilities. Well, that could be a feature if, if the intersection of Pomeroy is exactly. redone. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. To make them better. I guess um, to um, comments that were made earlier about the telephone pole lighting, that's not standard. I mean, these we're making the um suggestions for crosswalks right, right. not That's true uh, well, yeah. not, even, not then, even then i, I mean most, i wouldn't worry most too much pole. about yeah. whether it's on a separate pole or attached to a uh, light pole at the, the roadside because right. the other lights um, are literally street lights they're designed to light and light the street the public way not the sidewalk yeah um, i agree okay, and yeah, i don't and if we don't agree. call it a cobra then the, it will last longer like you know, as somebody said, if you develop a different light standard or something. Yeah, Could yeah. we add here all standards listed under town wide use may be used downtown mm -hmm. and at village centers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's downtown one word. I'd make it one word. And village centers? Yeah. That. <laughs> Maybe use downtown and in village centers. Or... Got it. And in. Uh, in. 
or and or in or and or in village centers. <laughs> okay, but I, have a but I think about may I ask a question? Yeah. Um, there yes. are three, there are lights down at the Atkins Corner roundabouts that are like shell shaped. Um, what does Guilford think of those, and would he ever use those again elsewhere in town? We actually like them. They're they're kind of a they're a modified cobra head that's ornamental, is what they are. Yeah, I think they're nice. I think they're brighter too. The uh, the LED things, yeah, they are nice. Mm -hmm. So maybe they could be an option also. Can we get a picture of those? Yep. That that would be something. Um, Kim, in that comment yep. box you have up there, add picture of Atkins lights. Yeah, because the one, the one, the lights on the left, um, those are the, those go back forever. I mean, they're standard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they right. get the photo, they get the photo cell on the top. And mm -hmm. um, that's very old technology. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do like the, the kind of out of place on Atkins roundabout, really. <laughs> um, and so um, these are fine, these uh, standards that we've set here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with, and I didn't think these are everywhere. Are, they're optional. Okay. Because they're, why, what, when do you decide to put one of these out? Mostly when the road is wide enough and there's a large enough pedestrian flow at that crosswalk. Okay. Um, oh, here's more lighting, adequate lighting. I had a question just about that sign. Um, I mean, there's other types of yield signs too. Um, I don't know, just in terms of making this a document that it doesn't need to come back for like other approval, like if the if it changes or something. Guilford, what do you think? Like not directly referencing R1-6 or something. Well, that's that's the that's actually that sign, no matter how it's changed. No, I know. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hear you. So it has but, to be it has to be like this. Well, image, that's what I but it doesn't I mean, that's what I'm this, yeah, like, but Oh, but I was thinking if you didn't reference in the under, like under the text in four reference R16 or something that would just make it more flexible, like if the state or whoever came up with a new sign, you know? Well, well, we, we have that paragraph that basically yeah. refers to the federal yeah, of course. State right, right, right. Uh, national transportation mm -hmm. guidelines. So, you know, if those change, you'd expect that changes would um, and so this is the goal is to provide focused downcast lighting for the length and the width of the crosswalk. That's still what we envision. What? Oh, so these are the three, the different examples of downtown lights. But I thought this one was a very special example. Sorry, and I'll get to you. Yeah, it is. But I thought we were trying to push for it still because we liked it a lot. The bollards. So, yeah. Gilfred, I think, mentioned that they don't conform to standards, right. but um, <laughs> that we still use them. So, yeah, and we, we well, would like to see them. It's, it's it's the remnants of a system that is approved, and oh, all course. the other all the other pieces are missing except for the bollards. <laughs> <laughs> um, Holden has a question. Um, hi. Yeah, I I guess I've been thinking about this a little bit. Um, and especially with the uh, crossing sign. Uh, I don't know if this document is the right place, but just in terms of maintenance or uh, repairs to some of these things where, where those recommendations might appear, or maybe this isn't um, the document that those would appear, but uh, specifically think about painting some of the crosswalks and uh, replacing or fixing those signs as they get hit over time. Guilford would be our person on that. Signs get replaced pretty quickly, as fast, fast as we pretty much can. The painting, though, is at least once, we try to do them once a year. That's it. So if you want to put that in there, but the signage gets 
pretty much replaced whenever, as soon as we know it's bro it's broken. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's why we're kind of pushing more for the the epoxy, oh, so the thermoplastic based ones, right? Right. Expand use of that because it, it's more permanent. Did we did we mention that in the introduction? You know, in actually, that's no, I don't think we did, Kim. Right. I think that's an important. Yeah, because it would be great in somewhere like Cushman on that corner. It's important to mention that there, I don't know, I feel like it, it's just a, another piece of kind of due diligence that we also thought about, or yeah, we. Expand the use of the. Um, thermoplastic. Thermoplastic uh, crosswalks, yeah. Um, oh, and the raised crosswalk. Mm -hmm. um, and they're really are very limited. I mean, that's a limited option. Right. Uh, well, we consider, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, and additional pedestrian safety area options. What does that mean? <laughs> area, oh, utilizing these enhancement tools include village center school zones significantly use pedestrian crosses in other air areas. Okay. I did say something here like other areas, area. right? And we and we also added village center specifically into the front section so we could remove village section from this text. Village centers from the text. And I would just put in the front, like on the front of the sentence to say other areas, right? Oh wait. And yeah, other other areas. I would just start the paragraph or sentence with. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. And then we can take this out and other areas possibly using these enhancement tools include school zones, other significantly used pedestrian crossings and other areas. I, yeah, I guess here I would say other areas as determined by engineering study or something. Yeah. Yeah, so that's fine. Okay. Does that seem reasonable? Yep. Um, same as, oh, one to three is the same I see. Uh, um, mm -hmm. As a town as standard. Okay. Yep. Signage at unsignalized, uncontrolled approaches, pedestrian and crosswind downward area arrow plaque. Oh, that's these examples. Okay. Um, state law to yield crossing sign. That seems pretty important. Um, flashing. And, now, and do we need to have anything on here about like actual, like the signals themselves, like, or I don't know. I mean, not as a standard, but even like mention the idea of like an audible signal or something or well, remember, these are usually in neighborhoods, and neighborhoods end no, up of course, not right. liking the the noise. They, that's true. So, I mean, what you guys talked about er earlier was having a section on on crosswalks at intersect at a signalized intersections, which is not really covered in here. So right. Okay. Really, yeah. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah. If you wanted to add another section after this, or yeah, uh huh, that talks about. Signalized well, intersections. Do you want us to do that, Guilford? Uh, you know, I, it's it's six. So, it's, I mean, I guess with the signalized signalized intersection, I mean, they wouldn't be that different, right? Well, there's well, the ability to add oral alarms, right? Potentially. I mean, I. It seems like the crosswalks are the crosswalks, so. But we don't we don't have an example here of walk lights, though, do we? Yeah, I mean, no, no. I mean, could, well, that could be simply added and a photograph added. I mean, I guess that would be the main thing to talk like, and okay. you wouldn't, of course, have walk lights at like every signalized intersection. It would just be. Uh, you do in Amherst. Well, Sorry. in the down in the downtown area, but you obviously no, most other places. There's only there's only one in town that doesn't have the crosswalk the sick the crosswalk for pedestrian lights. And that's all a, the rest. Well, that's on 116 and Meadow, right? At 116 and uh, Pomeroy. Pomeroy, yep. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, but that will happen. But like for example, like if if you're um yeah, I was gonna say once you're saying a Pomeroy doesn't, that's what Lauren I was thinking. Well what, so but we need to have I feel we like we talked about the 116 and meadow allowing for some crossing pedestrian crossing right because of the the businesses on the other side of the street so do we need to kind of say where we would suggest you would have a um a walk sign i mean a walk sign you know walk lights and do we need to talk about how we it sh they need to be long enough to allow for you know crossing at 45 degrees or whatever we do up here and that sort of thing well it, 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 town, the town doesn't have any control over that right guilford 116 no. in meadow it's right. a state road no 116 in meadow is ours oh it is oh it okay. is aren't there yeah. there are walk lights also at one at um north pleasant street in meadow right Yes, yeah, they're all there. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only intersection that doesn't have a crosswalk light for pedestrians is the Pomeroy 116. Right. And oh, right. yeah. and also the 116 Meadow, right? 116 Meadow has them. Oh. It does? Yep. A crossing 116. Okay, I didn't realize. Yeah, hold on, I'll show you. I mean, you there's no, there's not. <laughs> Well, There's I, not a lot of pedestrian friendliness out there, so. At 116 but, in Meadow? Yeah, I mean, I thought that was part of the concerns when Rise went in, right? That people would try to cross there and stuff. Oh, oh no. you mean that one? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Um, is, is that a state road or is that not a state, state road? road? It's all yeah. state road. We don't have anything oh, to do with that okay. one. That one is a state. Chris is right. That, isn't that Meadow? That is Meadow, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Couldn't, couldn't the cross the uh, walk signals go under optional enhancements toolbox? That's um, true. Actually, if you really want to talk about intersections, you should just put in a section for intersections. Yeah. Okay. I think if we, maybe we just have a short section, you know, in terms of, we're not changing any of the materials, right? Like the, the paving materials or anything. Mm -hmm. Nope. You just, you it, just it would just be to say, you know, yeah. That I'm you just... want that you want the crosswalk buttons, you want the crosswalk lights, and if you want the crosswalk countdowns. That's really so we would add a new section here. The last section would be that. Um, actually, maybe you might want to move it up since the last section is just like optional things. Addition, there are additional safety options. Right, okay. Maybe you might want to put it kind of there. Yeah, I yeah. mean, well, does it, it doesn't say when it, when this says townwide yeah. standards. So I guess in front of optional enhancements toolbox, so you could say in front of that, so that's on page three, we could have a little section, you know, for signalized intersections or something. Or something. Yeah, or, or you could put it in the town wide standards because we, we would do the same well, town wide. Yeah. That, well, that's what I'm saying is ahead of the optional, ahead of B. Yeah. So it would just be... have maybe it could even be number six or something. It could be, um, you know, signalized intersection additions or something, additional yeah. components for signalized intersections. Because we're not saying change the lighting, you know, we're not saying change anything. We're just saying at signalized intersections, we also add. Yeah um i think that's a good place for it yeah mm -hmm. okay so um you know i guess we would i mean do we need more do we want to just do this now or do we want to discuss this more i well what guilford had mentioned right it's just to have um walk lights like as a standard you would have the walk lights and that and then you would also have, like walk signals and you would also have um <clears throat> why don't you just say i'll add something in there right okay that's fine 
but the main the two main parts would just be the walk signals and also if there's audible signals or something if we wanted to include that or if we say that that could be an enhancement in areas that have like even higher or how about just putting it into that section and saying and where where appropriate uh suggested audible signal or that could go under the enhancement part too because mm -hmm. i would think that there could be some intersections where like a countdown or something could be suitable or uh, i think everybody wants a countdown seems oh really be, okay it seems to be the standard everybody wants is countdowns so and they want the the aud audible they want audible as well i mean when we talk about the RFBs, something we should probably add in that section is because is the uh, audible. audible. But doesn't it get complicated to take care of the maintenance of the audible? And also, as Kim said, like some people don't like the audible. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's just like that audible. Guilford said that. And it's I true. I mean, it does. It can go life. off a lot. So one one type of signal i really liked um i saw it in uh millberry is it millberry in millberry mass which is in central mass is um that they had this uh, they had a right turn on red at like the a major village center intersection but it would only activate the no right turn on red if the pedestrian cross crossing button was pushed so if there was a pedestrian who pushed the button, as they're supposed to do, then there would be a big like no right turn on red and otherwise you would be able to do right turn on red. And um, I really liked that. Um, I haven't seen them before. I don't know, Guilford, have you ever seen those? Yeah, we actually, we have, we have one of those signs on Main Street and Triangle. But oh, not, right, okay. Not set up the way it's, it just automatically says no right turn on red during the ped cycle. Oh, no, no. So this was just based on like on demand. And I think yep. about how around um, like East Hadley Road. I remember when no. this went. What, no, but at East Hadley Road, um, there's no right turn on red there from East Hadley Road on to 116 going south that I remember I think it was a public works committee meeting or something and some people said oh I really want you know I'm tired of waiting <laughs> for the the light and so on I like you should get rid of the restriction on right turn on red and and the committee said no because because there can be times a day when you have a lot of people trying to cross there to go to the park or so on but well, like that that to me seemed like that could be a good location for something that's just no right turn on red at certain times a day or like based on demands because I mean there are well, a lot of times of the day or the year when nobody is like walking there as much. Well that that so. one that you're describing, Guilford, I, I've used that many times on my bike and it works really well. Uh the one on Main Street. Yeah. It, it, it has only one little it has one little glitch, is that, and that's it's also on during a couple other cycles. Um ah. because because we don't have a controller that's smart enough to do it, but it only come it only comes on the pedestrian cycle when a pedestrian pushes the button, and then it says no right turn on red during that ped cycle, which is a designated oh, cool. ped cycle. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I found it to be very effective. Um, Holden has a comment. Question? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah, I I that intersection I live really close to it, and it does work well. I have noticed that a lot of cars are either stopped kind of unnecessarily at the right turn um, or a lot of people just jump the red light and go anyways. Um, but I would say that the, I think one of the reasons that intersection works for having um, a kind of temporary no right turn on red is because the bike lane is to the left of the turn lane. So there's no danger of hooking a cyclist Mm -hmm. uh, as as a car is turning, I don't know the intersection um, that we're talking about. If that has a separate, if the bike lane is to the left of the turn lane, um, but that would be something to look for. True. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Really good point. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, that's true at any intersections, really. Right. I guess just thinking about if the no right turn on red is yeah. uh, right. for only pedestrians or if it's also for bikes. You just swipe the bicyclist out earlier on those intersections. Well, so hold on. So the one I was thinking about in South Amherst is um, that there's a lot of cyclists are actually, I think, on the there's like a path that's off the road. And so it's a T intersection, actually. So it's not, I think it's different um, when you have a, like a four-way intersection, as you're describing that triangle, where, you know, you can have a lot of through traffic because of the T intersection, that it would stop. But. Um, Is it possible to add that somewhere? Uh, pedestrian activated, no turn on red? Mm -hmm. as, an as an enhancement. As an enhancement. Mm -hmm. An optional enhancement. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll add um, seven here. Is that is that where we're thinking of putting it? What? Eight, nine, nine. Sorry, nine. nine. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, did we we didn't we didn't review that part yet, right? Yeah, yeah, but that's that just like yeah. Op well, no, there's should, there's already an optional in the Oh, right, it's option. Okay, so yeah. pedestrian or biker activated. Wasn't it signal uh, no, activated? No, no turn on red signal. Is that how you yeah, say it? Signal um, activated, whatever. Yeah. Because then it doesn't no matter whether it's on. bike or. Yeah. Well, bi bicycles well, are uh, vehicles and they're not supposed to turn on red when there's pedestrians right. present either. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, like. They're also not meant to drive through a, a ride through a red light, too. But or it could, it could be like a push yeah. button activated, no turn on red. Or yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, push button. Yes. Push button mm -hmm. for nine there. Mm -hmm. And we'll say Guilford will add an in picture or something. Um, so we still want to look at this um, while I'm doing this. Do we still want to review this bottom part? So I did have a, I remember having a question just about the medians oh, section okay. Sorry. just above. Sorry. So we had raised crosswalks and then other options, right? Lighting is great and. Uh, raise crosswalks. That's great. Bump outs. Great. Um, the I guess the one question I had about the medians, right, is we don't have any text with the medians at all. And I remember from when we reviewed this in May, like the one on the left, I had concerns a little bit about how narrow the median is there. <laughs> um, I mean, we can take that one out and we can just say five, five foot me five foot minimum median widths or something like that. I mean, just in terms of like, if we're talking about standards, right, that, yeah, I wouldn't want the left to be used as an example of like ideal media, <laughs> just if it was in a area that had like a high volume of traffic. Yeah, that one's actually not working. Those aren't working very well. Well, actually one works very well. The other ones don't work very well at all. There's like four of them. Wait, are you talking Fine. about the median? So what happens with the median? Are you talking about them? The RFB or the just the median or the, the medians. Because there's the big one at just close to Sand Hill, right? The bigger median, the wider median. Um, no, that one actually gets tagged a lot. So what happens? You're talking about the drivers drive on them, or what yeah, happens to them? They get they don't they're not very. Yeah, they get driven on a lot. Oh. There's. Actually, how many are? I have to see how many. I think there's two. There's two or three. I think it's just the two, right? There's just the one close yeah. to Sand Hill and that one. Well, and I, I think, and we could just have just text there, you know, rec but also that the medians can be used for when you have like longer crossings, right? Including yeah, the would, median when you have. I mean, just a little, but if we want to have any text. So yeah, what do we want? We to can. You want to write up this up, and or, do we want to take this picture out? Yeah, I, we'll take that picture out. I do like the um, Kim. I like what you had about five foot minimum recommended. 
that's that seemed good but that just like maybe have a sentence or just a phrase about you know having well, is, is there consider a, like medians could be considered in areas that have high levels of pedestrian traffic and where the crossing like the cr the total crossing distance is long or something yeah i was just going to ask that is there a is there a um, standard guilford where these are recommended because of the width of the highway there is uh, mass dot has a actually has a, a six foot standard um, and we've been kind of playing around with it. The ones on Pine are only two feet wide. Oh my God. Um, Yikes. So um, actually, I think they're, they're two or three feet wide. Um, Was there a reason why you put them in there? Yeah, people wanted them and we, we, went, we went ahead and tried it out and it's not really working that well. Yeah. I, think it, two, I mean, they're just two, standard width roads, right? It's not especially wide yeah it's they're not, in the middle of nowhere and it's, two um, two feet medians are not enough i don't think i wouldn't no. they wouldn't make me feel safer <laughs> as a pedestrian i might need to start losing weight so. is it like, also yeah, dependent on the speed of the traffic because, slowing down? yeah i was just going to say is it a is it a method to try to slow down the traffic if it's going it okay. is yeah. But I think they need to be road. more imposing. Yeah, than they are. I would agree. I would want to see a narrower roadway so, in general um, than a tiny median in the middle. Okay, so what you have there is a narrowed roadway with the tiniest median you can put in to make everything fit. Yeah. So right. that was the compromise there. Right. <laughs> but but um, can I um, hang on a second? Let us put our let us. I know Paul upstairs has it because he's using the standards right now. Um, I'll get this language from him and I'll, I'll put it in there okay. and send it to you. Guys. Yeah, because I mean, okay. some of it is though, like on the pine, they are, um, you just got those yellow bollards in, right? And so they don't really impose much to the driver to make them to slow down. There's not much grade separation, kind of like as there is in the picture. I mean, um, If you can get something that is a bit more imposing in the roadway, then that would force you to slow down more, you know, visually um, encourage you to slow down more. So something, let's see if I can get this picture. Well, so, here's, yeah, here's, this is the same one or, right? Is this the same right, one? Right, yeah, 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 exactly. It's but there you're showing post. it for the R or for B, yeah. Yeah, it's- Yeah, it's no, 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 but I'm just this, referring right. back to yeah, this Yeah, no, one. of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm just thinking of like, you know, bigger, squarer structures <coughs> in the, oh, I've got some amazing British things to show you, but um, <laughs> well, it's looking rather raggedy. But uh, if I might be able to share for two seconds. I can, let me. Um, if you just, I think I can just like. Uh, yeah, you can't double share or something. Yeah, I can. I'll so, just, I it'll just. Uh, I just had a quick comment too that I, I would recommend taking out high pedestrian zone okay. because a place like Pine Street doesn't have a high pedestrian use, but it's more for the safety of anybody using it. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. And also, I, you could also target it to certain areas like with vulnerable populations, like if it was near a school or a senior center or something or. Yeah, you could say especially near near schools and uh, senior centers or, or high population areas, something right. like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this but this is isn't that what we, this is like, what we ooh. said at the beginning <laughs> of that document. What? Wait, what is Those that? <laughs> that's a belly, I mean, that's a beacon that just sits in the middle of a, a, um, a medium, but it's, I'm just showing it's, it's more imposing than say. It's more, how tall is that thing? That thing looks oh, it's really tall. Like, Three or four feet tall, but oh. it's, you know it's better than just a, a couple of uh, right. you know yellow posts in the yeah. middle of the road to kind of like force you to slow down. But I mean, this is kind of the thing that you know it's lit. It's actually lit in there too. But I mean, that's neither here nor there. But I mean, just something as something to think about as you know something to put in the middle of the median to force the effect that you're after. So. But anyway, I'm I'm uh, done now. So, so it okay. sounds it sounds like Guilford 
so Guilford, you're going to make a few changes to this, you know, based like add a few pictures or a little bit of language, but it seems like we're pretty much done. Yeah. Yep. So as a committee, I guess, do we want to have Guilford just bring it back to us and then we do like a final vote on it? But I don't think we would yes. need to spend very long on it. No. Because mm -mm. Agreed. Gonna... Yeah, no, I think we're good. I, mm -hmm. I think we're pretty close. Yeah. Very, very close. Okay. That sounds good. Does that work for you, Guilford? Could we do that for the next meeting? Yeah. Great. And I'm sorry we didn't get to your, we're like running out of time. We didn't get to your, um, the thing about the roadways. I mean, about the banning. Well, we do have a few minutes. Banning parking on the arterials. Oh, oh right. we can do that next time. Okay, we can do it next time. I mean, Guilford, how, pri how high a priority item is for that for you? Like, I mean, I do definitely want to do it. We're already in the middle of winter. I don't know. Um, and so, uh, but I did want, you know, we did have on the agenda too, to go over our recommendations um, to send, you know, our, the memo that we were sending to the TAC, I mean, the TSO and the council. So could we put that ahead of the road piece or do you think the road piece would take up most of the meeting or? Uh, I think if you put them both on the agenda and do the one you want to do first on the agenda, that's fine. Okay. But um, because I don't feel like we would need to save it. I mean, I I I would be comfortable with the road one if just you had brought it to us originally back in whatever January of 2020, I think, and just said, hey, the DPW has a list of roadways we want to ban on street parking outside of marked parking areas, and I agree with that concept. I don't think. I mean, I don't I don't necessarily know if we'd have to have a long discussion about it, but you guys won't. Everybody else will. <laughs> well, if we just make this one about the arterial streets and not talk about issues like the cul-de-sacs and stuff, I feel like it should go quicker because the cul-de-sacs are a little trickier. So, okay. So I just sent that document to Tracy and Guilford. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to adjourn or to... Yeah, well, can we just briefly talk about when our next meetings are? And Kim had a request on that. Yeah, sure. I am um, for the semester. I, I think I'm one of the people who requested having an earlier meeting, but it turns out on Thursdays, I teach until uh, most Thursdays, I teach until 5.15. And um, so a 5.30 meeting uh, start time would mean that I could make it to the start of the meetings this semester. <laughs> but couldn't you well. just have your students join the meeting too? With, uh, <laughs> <Anna? laughs> I mean, for extra credit. Yeah. <laughs> so I was I was recalling that one reason I think we used to have our meetings at 530 and we moved them to five because we were hoping to not conflict with the TSO meetings. Um, I don't yeah. know. I did reach out to the TSO chair um dorothy Who's pam about dorothy pam is the new chair okay. and i didn't hear about when they decided to set their meetings and unfortunately i missed that part of the meeting just i don't know chris off. or guilford were you at the tso meeting at all yeah so paul was there the town manager was there um but they she didn't respond to me about when those meetings are set but i mean i think we can bump it back later I'm just wondering if at least for the next yeah. um, 13 Let's... weeks, which is the length of the semester, sure. we might mm -hmm. um, push it up. I, and I apologize, but it considering the issues with quorum, um, for sure. I don't want to waste people's time. <laughs> mm. You know, I think they haven't that... established it yet. They have yet to establish a start time. Oh, how do you know this? Or... Uh, I am talking to the, um, uh, one of the councillors that's on it. Um, oh, right, right now in real time while you're in while real you're time. Here with us. I know it is. It's like <laughs> modern technology. It's crazy. Okay, so, all right. So they haven't done it yet. Well, their okay. next one is at six o'clock on the first of February. So that's uh, not even. They, that's not. That's, that's not, not on Thursday. Thursday yeah. anyway. Yeah. So, so that's yeah, great we're, let's just go with yeah. that. That's fine. They haven't even decided that. So I think I just say we go ahead, do it, and then right. they can work to us. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure that's how it works. <laughs> okay. Sure. Well, then let's make. 
I don't so see why have, we yeah can't we, decide. We can have our next meeting then for February fourth, and we'll just do we want to start it then? Kim, do you want to? Is it? I can start at six or five thirty. Do people have a five thirty is totally fine for okay, me great. because either I will do the meetings in my office or I will take my seven minute bike ride home. That still leaves me eight minutes to <laughs> get a drink Excellent. of water and get started. Okay. okay. <laughs> That, that's, that's the third we're talking about, not the third. Fourth. Yeah. Oh, third. sorry. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. I thought, oh my gosh. Yes. What would be the second meeting then in, in February? Well, yeah, I think it would be the 17th. We meeting, it would be the 17th, which is good, I guess, because then we don't have the February break. Right. Yeah. No, no. I saw that too. I, I, I will um, not be able to attend on the 17th, but okay. you'll still have the quorum, correct? Maybe we can uh, have some new members by then. We can ask and see if we can. Uh oh, Bernie, you don't think you can make that one? I'm not sure I can make that one either. On okay. the 17th. It's All my right. birthday, and I'm even going to make it. Well, do we <laughs> want to move that one to the 24th? I well, can't be. I, no, we're, the week. we're <laughs> leaving. We're going away on that date. Okay. So. Yeah, maybe that's February we, uh, break. Yeah, yeah, it's February break. Or it's such a short month. I mean, maybe we just meet. We no, we, we need to meet twice. Oh, okay. Can we do back to back weeks? I could do a back to back week. I could. I could do that. Okay. Which, so which then. Week? So we'd meet on the third and the tenth. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The 10th. okay. I'll let Amber know. Yeah, I can do that one. But it would still have to be a. 530, 530 start. Yep. Okay, thank yeah, you guys. I, I'm I'm all good with the 530 start. I mean okay. it kind of pushes it a bit too late on the back yeah. end. I oh, know for sure. So, and you have little people. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would prefer going back to the five o'clock start time when this is over, but you know, I can't definitely can't all bend to my will. So <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. We're good. Okay. okay. All right, Bruce. Bruce, you if you want. Uh, Move to adjourn. Second. Second, first. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.